Hi guys, Mike back again with the next part of the Dreadclaw Drop Pod video, although this is kind of part of my Death Guard update um, series of videos too. Those of you that have watched the previous video will know that I was building up a Legion Dreadclaw Drop Pod, the Anvilus Drop Pod from Forgeworld, which um, um, I am incorporating into my Death Guard army. It's going to be the transport for one of my Cortus Contemptors. Anyway, I just wanted to kind of show you the painting of it, just to kind of finish off the series, really. Uh, so the last video concerning it, the thing was fully built. I then primed it with, I use Vallejo, the Panzer Grey. Um, I've, I've had a few uh, pots of the, uh, or, or bottles of the of the black, and it's, and it's plasticized really quickly over time. And uh, I don't know, I suppose that's because it's black and it attracts the heat and warms up and... I'm not sure really, but uh, but it seems to plasticize and it gums up my airbrush. So I've stopped using the black and I use the Panzer Grey instead with no issue thus far. Anyway, so I, I um, uh, yeah, primed it Panzer Grey and then basically with a mixing of overbrushing and dry brushing, and I've shown you this before on previous videos, uh, started off with dark brown and then sort of moved up to light browns dark oranges, mid oranges, light oranges, rust colors. Um, and this is this is all like the pre-work before I actually paint the thing. And this is gonna form my chipping effects, which I'll show you. Uh, so this is where we are with the Anvilus. So it's built. Um, and this is basically what it's gonna, this, this, is the, this is the underneath effect. So what I do with my Death Guard army, I am, um, yeah, so you can see, sort of the dark browns, and then I've just kind of tried to go lighter, further up the vehicle. Uh, and when I chip the model, when I end up chipping it, this is the color that's gonna show up underneath. So bearing in mind, when I chip up here, it, this will show through, and when I chip down here, this will show through. Went for a really, I don't know really, I, I, I like it, I'm not sure, but we'll see. Went for a bit of a mad effect on the metallic pieces. Um, these are kind of these are the metal bits that are, that are going to be metal with the with the iris and all the bits under here, and just kind of did a, a mad dry brush over brush with can't remember the color Temple Guard blue I think it's kind of the, the Citadel range turquoise color. Anyway, I wanted to kind of give that a look, and when I and I'll end up painting these silver and then probably chip them back so you can kind of see this this effect coming through, kind of bleeding through the uh, the metallics. But actually. It doesn't look too bad right now. <laughs> so we are going to continue to paint it, clearly. What I'm going to do next, and those of you that aren't familiar with the process, so this is this is this is undercoated effectively. And then what I'm going to do, through the airbrush, I use this stuff, aka interactive heavy chipping acrylic fluid. Um, go straight through the airbrush. I, I airbrush a couple of coats all over the model. So I'll, I'll, I'll cover the model twice, so do two passes. Obviously wait for the first coat to dry. Leave that there, just for you something to look at. Uh, let the uh, yeah, let the first coat dry, put another coat on, let that dry, and then just start building up the colors, the, the, the top coat colors. So we're looking at Rakarth flesh, bit of weathering, some pallid witch flesh on the top highlights. Bring it all back down with some more AK interactive weathering fluids. I'll go for some streaky grime. Um, and then basically chip the model. And what I mean by that is um, get the model wet or, or use a brush or a cotton bud or something just to kind of rub, rub at sections of this model. Um, and then we'll as, the, as the model gets wet, it interacts with this and takes off the top layer. So it'll take off the Rakar flesh, leaving the, this layer um, showing through. If you scrub too hard, if you go all at it with a brush or with a cotton bud or whatever you might be using to take the paint off, you will go back to bare resin. You will go back to, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, like I say, go back to bare resin. What I've tried to do to counteract that though is give it a coat of, um, give it a coat of sealant. I, I um, matte varnished it before I started doing this. So we'll see if that works. I don't know if it will or not, but anyway, We'll have a go. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do now is put the chipping fluid on, let that dry, and then basically start painting it. I'll airbrush it, like I said, my Death Guard colors, rack off flesh, get some green accents on there, I'm not really sure where. Might do these sort of bits here green. Um, 
So we'll see, we'll see we'll sort of make it up as we go along and then start chipping it. And once it's all chipped, we'll put all the detailing work in, like these pipes, for example, I don't want to be chipped. Um, but pretty much everything else actually is gonna get chipped. Um, the iris will probably remain unchipped, but we'll see how it goes. Not really sure yet. So again, it's uh, it's a fluid process. So we'll see where we get to, but I will show you to show it to you once it's all finished. Uh, so that's it for this one, guys. And I'll um, catch you either in a second, and I'll continue this video, or I'll catch you on the next one where I'll show you the finished um, drop pod. So take care. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys. Okay, guys, and we've finished the drop pod. I've decided just to tack it on to the end of the uh, the previous section of this video. And we're done. I had quite a nice little bit of time off over Christmas. Um, so it's the Friday before New Year today as I'm filming this. And, uh, yeah, so I'm pretty pleased with the way this has come out. I'm really pleased with the results. So Dreadclaw drop pod to um, transport my Cortis Contemptor predominantly, but also could be used to transport 10 models, potentially. So you saw it being built and you saw it in the pre-paint stage. Uh, I put some transfers on, I put the crossed scythes on and the 14s on the tops of the fins there. And basically just weathered the whole thing up. Painted these sections green, painted these sections green and the rest of it kind of the marble weathered color. Um, yeah, and then rusted rusted the heck out of it, as they might say. Kept the pipe work clean though, that it's it's um kind of weathered, but you can't really, it's not really coming out on camera, but it kept it more clean looking than anything else. So you can see the top view there, all the turbines kind of used as it were. So I'm really pleased with this. The doors don't open, they're not designed to, to open, so it's a sealed unit as it were. Rusted up the, the landing legs and the claws here. So I've got, I'm rotating it, but it's exactly the same on all five um, faces. But yeah, really pleased with it. It came out, I, I, I really like it. it. Fits the theme of my army. Um, and that's that. So did some, uh, OSL glow on the lights. I think they're lights anyway. On the on the uh, assault portal on the iris. So pretty pleased with that. And again, just rusted up the claws, the cutting claws. But yeah, just sort of you know, it's slamming into the side of a ship or something, I suppose, and cutting its way in, and uh, everything's piling out of this assault portal. So. Really pleased with him actually, really pleased with it. So that's it, that's my Dreadclaw drop pod all done. Next up, it's the Spartan. Time for the Spartan to make an appearance. Um, this was my uh, my kind of quandary about getting a Mastodon. Um, and I decided to get a Fellblade instead of the Mastodon. But the reason I was getting a Mastodon was to transport Mortarian to get him up the field. Uh, but Mortarian is well enough transported in a Spartan. Like I say, it's the same armor values all the way around Spartan as it is a Mastodon. I appreciate the Mastodon's got void shields, but I, I, I'm thinking that a, uh, a Spartan's going to get up the field <laughs> uh, in good enough time to uh, to, to get Mortarian out. Uh, so, so the plan is that it'll transport Mortarian and uh, seven Death Shroud, his bodyguard. And uh, and those, those Death Guard aficionados will know everything comes in sevens. So yeah, you can you can take... Uh, rounded up numbers of squads, but uh, I think it's uh, heretical to take uh, anything other than numbers divisible by seven, uh, particularly when it comes to the Death Shroud. So that's next. I'm going to do the Spartan on its own uh, and then probably making a close uh, kind of appearance after that will be the Death Shroud. I still haven't painted up Mortarian yet. This is this is 30k Mortarian rather than Demon Mortarian. Um, but yeah, I still haven't painted up the big guy, so I think he will probably make an appearance in early-ish 2018, potentially. But yeah, drop pods done, Spartan next, and then we'll go from there. So let me know what you think, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers, guys.